Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Conversation with Fredo. This is the show which I host different people from all walks of life to share their, their journeys and their experiences. Today, I have a very special guest. I just met this guy online. He's so, so amazing. And the work that he's doing is, so, is, is very inspiring. And I just can't wait for us to just do this. So today I have a special guest, Temba Kumalo. He's a motorist, he's a public, he's a public speaker, he's also, he also do coaching. Oh, so Temba, welcome to the program. Hey, Freedom. Uh, thanks for having me and uh, greetings to all the viewers watching from wherever they are. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, for those people who don't know who Temba Kumalo is, what can you tell us? Where were you born and how did this all started? Yeah, I'm uh, Temba Kumalo. Uh, my racing name is Temba the Chief Kumalo. Yeah. I am a, I'm a professional superbike racer. Okay. Um, I'm 25 years old. I was initially born in Soweto, uh, in Aledi. Yeah. But I grew up in Kempton Park um, from my, you know, from my early childhood till I was a teenager. Then since 2006, I've been living in Pretoria. Uh, my story is just that, you know, I'm, I'm passionate about motorbike racing, specifically super bikes. I have ventured into other areas of the sport. Um, later on in my career, I got into coaching where I mainly coach kids, okay. uh, juniors who race. Um, I'm also, a, it's weird because I'm not like a trained public speaker or anything like that, but I've always had a knack for speaking. So I do a lot of, uh, coverage of motorsport, uh, okay. TV, um, almost like punditry, you know, almost like football punditry. I like oh, okay. to, um, give my opinions on things like MotoGP and that I also do commentating, um, on the side, but, uh. A brief history of my racing career, which is the main portion of it, is that in the holidays, I was on school holiday in yeah. 2007. It was the June school holidays. Um, I was just sitting at home, bored. Uh, I was just channel surfing. You know, I was bored of Cartoon Network and that. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> by, you know, by chance, I literally, I just, I was scrolling through Supersport and then I saw a motorbike race, which was MotoGP. Yeah. Um, which for people who don't know MotoGP, it's basically the Formula One equivalent of motorbikes. It's oh, the okay. highest world championship of bike racing. I saw MotoGP, I watched a race and I, it wasn't like a, like a eureka moment. We was like, oh, this is amazing. I want to do this. I just watched the race and I was like, ah, okay, that's cool. And then <laughs> two weeks later, I saw another race playing and I was like, okay. And then I watched more and more and more. Then yeah. by the end of that year, 2007, I told my mom, you know, I want to race motorbikes. Um, and incredibly, she didn't say no. Yeah, know, yeah, I wanted to ask. I, I was about yeah. to ask that. I was about to ask that. What, what, what was the response? Yeah, you know, most black mothers wouldn't do <laughs> of that. Just out of the blue. Yeah. But, um, yeah, she was very supportive. She said, uh, let's find out how we can get this going. Yeah. And at that time, so this is now the beginning of 2008, um, my late older sister, Gwen, uh, worked at a company where, you know, by God's grace, the owner of the company had a racing team. Oh. Um, so she organized a meeting with him and I, that was Richard Olsen. And when I was 12 years old, we, my mom, uh, Richard and I had a meeting. I told him I wanted to race. I didn't even know how to ride a bike. Yeah. And he just said, he said, okay, cool. I'll sponsor you. I've got a a team, a junior team, which was on pocket bikes, which was very, very small, like mini super bikes uh, for kids. Yeah. And he sponsored me to start racing there. I was 12 years old. That's when mm -hmm. my racing career started. And basically I, I learned very quickly. So in that same year where I learned how to ride a bike, I ended up winning the championship wow. at the end of the year. And I won the championship again in 2009. Wow. And then over the years, I steadily progressed um, on the different bike sizes, you know, so that it was from 100cc bikes to 150, 250, etc. I got my first opportunity to race overseas in 2011. 
Okay. When I was 15 in the European Junior Cup, which is a, a junior class to get um, riders from, you know, a national level to world championship level. Uh, I unfortunately was only able to do two races there because um, of, you know, lack of funding, but I managed to get a fourth in Monza in Italy. Okay. And off of the back of that result, I then got, uh, gave me exposure and I got sponsors here locally in South Africa which helped me to progress from there. So through the years 2012 to 2016, I progressed from 250cc bikes to racing 1,000ccs at nationals where I finished top 10 in the country in my first year. On the nationals, I also raced in the European Junior Cup again. Um, <laughs> a long distance in 2015. So I got a great opportunity to race in you know Italy, Spain, Portugal, UK, etc um and that's basically the story of how it's gone so my goal is to eventually race in the world championship and more than that is to inspire youth because uh, i'm the first black superbike racer wow um, and they, there's more there's more juniors coming so uh i want my legacy to be that you know i was a kid who saw bike racing on tv achieved great things and also paved the way for others to do more um following in my footsteps wow <laughs> wow man you're so amazing and congratulations to to all Thank your you. accolades that you've, you've received you're doing so much you know you know in and you know in in our black community race mm. motorbike racing is considered like risky yeah how, like how do you how do, how do you how do you want to change like the, the, the mindset and how do you think people should like look at how motor motorbike is is truly is because you are doing it and mm -hmm. yeah we just grow up you know you know if you do motorbike racing they'll be like man that's risky you can't do that you know, yeah. you know in our community so how do you how would you like to change the the misconception okay um that's a great question um so first of all, what you know, I have to be honestly clear about is that motorbike racing is dangerous. Yeah. Um, anyone, you know, beyond racing, anytime you get on a motorbike, mm -hmm. you have to be aware that you are taking a certain element of risk. But um, what most people don't know, what the general public doesn't know is that um, if you take the right precautions, wear the correct safety gear, equipment, um, when you make sure that your bike is maintained in a good condition that it doesn't break and cause you to fall off, yeah. then you can drastically reduce that amount of risk. So one thing I always try and encourage people to do is, you know, if they have the means to not ride on the road, um, to try bikes on a racetrack because at the racetrack, it's a controlled environment. Yeah. Um, when you fall off, there's nothing that you can hit. There's nothing you can crash into. Um, when you do fall off, there are medics on hand, um, medical personnel there to help you. So probably the biggest thing I can tell people to change uh, that stigma that bikes have is that I've I've lost count of how many times I've crashed, but I estimate probably more than 50 or 60 times um, over 11 years. And I've only ever been hurt twice. Um, and that's because of, you know, wearing the correct safety gear. So. Yeah. Yeah. You know, riding bikes is truly amazing. There's a there's a very famous saying where they say uh, four wheels move the body, but two wheels move the soul. Oh, and man, the man, I, to man, I didn't know. I bikes. didn't know that. That's so, <laughs> that's so powerful. Yeah, so it's it's something amazing, and I'm trying to bring the sport. You know, because traditionally it's been known as a white sport. Yeah, and I'm just trying to bring more attention to it. Um, and just to let everyone know that, you know, anyone can do this. Um, you know, I've, one thing I'm proud of is that I've introduced more people um, to the sport who've actually become racers. You know, there's um, there's a, a woman I think you should reach out to. Her name's Moronga Mahop. Okay. Um, I, I, and she's... You, you, yeah, you, 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 should connect, you should connect me with her. We should have her. We should, we should like, have her on, on this show. Yeah, you know, she's an extremely talented black woman. She's a mother of three. Yeah. And she started she started racing um quite late on. But um, you know, I met her at the track. I could see she was interested and I encouraged her, like, no, you know, if you really enjoy it and you're passionate, pursue it. Um, so that's one of my main objectives, you know, is to bring people to the sport and let them know that 
Um, you know, this is something that can be enjoyed in a somewhat safe manner. You right. do take a bit of risk, but you know, anything in life, you you are taking a risk. Very you know, anything you do, you are taking a risk. So, people, you know, come and join it, research, find out more. Um, and yeah, it's, you know, they always say motorbikes, motorbike racing is a drug, because you know, people keep coming back, even when you fall <laughs> off. You get you know, I've seen, I've seen guys with broken broken bone trying to get on the bike before even going to the hospital. So, it's it's truly something special. Okay, um, so what, what kind of advice do you want to give to someone who want to wanna do motorbike racing? I would say uh, come to a race. Um, there's lots of local racing series. Yeah. Um, the best place you can get information is to actually go to the track, uh, yeah. meet people. There's, um, there's a great facility, a track called Red Star Raceway. It's in Dalmas. Okay. Um, there they have uh, full training courses where you can come just you can come with yourself they'll give you a kit you can rent bike for uh, rent a bike for a day they'll mm -hmm. teach you how to ride from scratch um, just you know they'll teach you from basics just to pull off you know yeah. and stop and then they build you up build you up to where they take you onto the track um, with coaches and mentors um, I work with the track on some of the initiatives there so Go to a racetrack, um, you know, if you don't live in Gauteng, um, find your local racetrack. Um, and one thing which I really love about racing is the community, you know. Yeah. The racing community, is it's welcoming to everyone. It's a diverse community. There's all sorts of people from all sorts of walks of life. Um, and my advancement through my career um, has largely been through uh, good people being generous, you know, yeah. and seeing my passion and my talent and helping me progress. So... You know, go to a racetrack near you, uh, find out what's the nearest one to you, go there, speak to the owners of the track or someone who's there. And I, you know, I can almost guarantee that someone will help you to take the next steps. Great, great. Any life lessons that you would like to share with us? Oh, man. How, how long do you want this to be? <laughs> <laughs> um, Just share with us. Yeah, you know, I'd, I don't want to get too philosophical. Yeah. But, um, you know, I I remember in 2017, there was a MotoGP rider by the name of Maverick Vinales. Um, you know, one of the best riders in the world. He was he was coming to Kyle Army to visit South Africa to do a, a, a track day with fans. Um, and I got the opportunity to interview him. Um, so one cool aspect of that is, you know, uh, when I was 15, I decided to learn Spanish um, <sighs> because I had that vision that, you know, I'm going to race overseas. I want to get to the highest level. It's going to be important. Yeah. Um, and I managed to get the interview with him because he's a Spanish rider. So I ended up doing the interview with him in Spanish and I asked him, you know, what advice would you give to a, a young rider? You know, and he, he said, you know, whatever opportunities you get, take them. Um, so I would say simply, whatever opportunities are in front of you, take them, give it all you got. And second to that, don't give up. You know, one thing that I love with racing, especially for kids, you know, and younger people, and it's for everyone, but yeah. especially kids, it teaches them not to give up because when you crash at the racetrack, you know, people check, are you okay? Yeah. And no one's going to be rubbing your back saying, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, you're, you're, no, like, okay. They, you know, your mechanic or your dad or whoever's helping you, they fix the bike. They're like, okay, you're ready to get on again. You know? <laughs> so I, I really love that saying, you know, fall down seven times, stand up eight. Because yeah. there's many, you know, any race has had a, uh, a scenario where they've fallen and they have a bit of fear to get back on the bike. But then... You know, if there's a race or something coming up, then it's just that extra motivation to where you just realize, okay, I have to confront this fear, get yeah. back on the bike. So I feel like people have their bikes in any different walk of life. That thing that challenges them that they're afraid to do is that, you know, even if you fail, get on again because racing teaches you that you have to crash. You know, you're never going to win a race and say, oh, I'm not going to fall off. I'm not going to take risks. You have to crash to go fast eventually. But then you crash, you get on. You learn from the mistake, you keep going. So, yeah, I would say those two things uh, before <laughs> I take all the time. <laughs> That's powerful. What are you most proudest of? Wow. Um, 
that's a tough one. Um, Take your time. I would say I'm, mo I'm most proud of doing what I think shouldn't have been possible. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. um, if you if you look at my career on paper, that in July of 2007, I was uh, watching racing on TV and said I wanted to do it. And within four years of that, under five years, I was racing in Europe. And anytime, anytime I reflect on it, I'm like, this really shouldn't have worked. You know, um, I, all I had was, you know, at the beginning was my mom supporting me. We had the stream together yeah. and, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to mention two things, you know, okay. in line with that story was, um, in 2015, when I was racing in the European junior cup again, yeah. I raced at a track in the UK called Donington Park. Um, which is a track which holds world championship racing. And what I was really proud of is that Donington Park is the very same track where I watched that first race on TV. Wow. You know, so I went from watching the race in 2007 to actually being there racing on that track in 2015. Um, so I'm, I'm proud of doing what I feel was the impossible. Yeah. And um, I've got a, a good group of kids that I'm coaching now. Uh, if you don't... Hi. I think I lost. I think I lost you for for a minute there. You were saying you've got a okay. group of. You say you were saying you've got a group of kids which you are coaching. Yes, I've got a group of talented young kids that I'm coaching who race who also aspire to be world champions, professional. Um, mm -hmm. I've gone overseas with one of them this year. Um, young boy named KJ. Okay. Um, he's only fourteen. He raced in the Italian championship this year. Um, and he's done really well on that. So I'm most proud of, you know, breaking the barriers yeah. in terms of my own racing achievements. But I'm also proud that um, I made a conscious decision that I'm going to take my time, my energy, invested in youth, invested in the future. Because at the end of the day, you know, I'd, li I'd, I'd like to see a black world champion, yeah. which uh, there hasn't yeah. been before in motorcycle, in circuit motorcycle racing. And I hope it could be me to be the first. but if it's not me, I'm definitely going to make sure that whoever it is, you know, that I'm in their corner helping them to get there. So that dream and already the steps taken towards that dream, um, I'd say that's what I'm most proud of. Wow. You know, that's, that, that's, that's, that's what I like most about you. You're all about inspiring the next generation. You're all about inspiring the next person. And I feel like we are like-minded people doing like similar work. So that's what I like most about you. And I'm um, so, 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 so very proud of the work that you're doing. So um, where would you like to see yourself in the next 10 to five, in the next five to 10 years? In the next five to 10 years, I'd like to see myself racing overseas. Yeah. Um, if not in the world championship, in uh, a national championship overseas, because um, the European national championship, so like the Spanish championship, Italian championship, yeah. or the American championship, uh, it's the next step towards getting to the world championship because um, the racing is at a higher level. It's more resourced than it is here in South Africa and Africa. So I'd like to see myself racing in, the, in one of those championships, if not the world championship. And probably 10 years and beyond, I'd like to see myself with my own racing team with South African riders, um, with a group of South Africans, you know, from the mechanics, uh, to everyone involved being South African because, you know, we have a lot of guys already from South Africa doing well overseas, but um, I want us to be a force in international racing to put our mark to say, you know, we can do it too, we can do it at the highest level. And yeah, those are my ambitions going forward. Great. Who are you inspired by? Oh, uh, I'm inspired by my mom. <laughs> of this, uh, yeah. Special shout out to yeah. your mom. Special shout out to mama. Um, she always tells me not to talk about it in interviews because she says I talk about it too much. <laughs> um, she's, she's a big inspiration because, you know, I get a lot of credit for things I've done on the track and off the track, but, you know, the real, real credit goes to her because if it weren't for her supporting me, investing her own money, her own time, lots and lots of energy. You know, she's had to go to hospital with me many times. Uh, she's had to wait while I'm getting surgeries from injuries. Um, 
she's been through a lot and she you know we've had like i said we've had great people uh helping us along the way yeah but she's borne a lot of the responsibility for my success um so i'm inspired by her she had a lot of challenges through that process you know while i was in my early stages she was working she was raising me uh she was studying you know uh, wow. she was doing her tertiary studies afterwards wow. um and i think more than you know more than inspiration people take from me and what i do uh on and off the track i would say you not know, like other people to know what my mom's done because um you know parents who are watching who have ambitions for their own kids i'll say support your kids you know support their dreams if she had said you know you can't write just focus on school you know i wouldn't have the story to tell but she said work hard at school work hard at the track work hard at whatever you do you know and you'll be successful you'll make an impact um and it helps other people you know your own success helps other people it's not just for you so i've learned a lot from her uh i think i've taught her a couple of things as well <laughs> wow. she tells me sometimes but yeah she's my biggest inspiration wow she's that's so powerful and she's so amazing may god continue Thank to you. bless her amen yeah. yeah so um how would you like to be remembered um i would like to be remembered for doing a, le- a legacy of doing things which hadn't been done before yeah um i didn't know it at the time when i was starting to race because i was only 12 you know but i was making history but i would you know as i mentioned a bit earlier i would love my story to be that uh, a young kid in south africa saw bike racing on tv um and a lot of things have changed in the sport outside of the sport um creating a legacy to say that you know if you if you pursue something um with your heart with passion with hard work yeah. that you know the impossible can be done um and yeah i'd like to be remembered for that and also for you know helping others um that's very important to me because i feel like if i were to become a world champion but it didn't help others do great things after that it wouldn't be worth it for me um yeah. so i just like everything i've been seen to do to be you know to help other people to inspire others and that's what i'd like to be remembered for wow that's great is there anything that you would like to share with us that i didn't ask oh wow uh you know follow me on social media <laughs> <laughs> i was about to ask that i was about to ask that uh no i'm joking i'm joking um <laughs> Yeah, would uh oof, that's a tough one. I feel like we've covered everything. Yeah. But uh Yeah, I just hope the world becomes a better place. Um a lot's changing. Um I really love sports just because um you know, sport has its own politics across the board. Yeah. But there's a certain element of sport which is just pure, you know. Yeah. Um in popular sports like more popular sports like soccer, um rugby cricket those types of things you know you get these pure moments um where you know like the world can stand still yeah and say wow look at this incredible thing that happened um you know and just you know for people to look at sport not just bike racing but look at sport find the beauty in sport because i think it's you know it's the ultimate like you know there's reality tv but i feel like sports is the best reality tv <laughs> which is what so many people care about it, get invested um and yeah just for young people to to you know try and make the world a better place in whatever capacity they can because uh every every little bit that someone does makes the world better and sometimes a little thing you do you don't realize you don't always see the impact you know of your mm-hmm. actions Yeah. Um and for people to remember that that you know whatever you're doing good or bad impacts you and the world around you the people around you your environment your community so um just for people to focus on that you know there's a lot of things going wrong yeah. in the world and a lot of things that aren't the way they should be but yeah. um the best way one can start to fix those things is just by doing things themselves yeah. uh working on themselves improving what they can whatever's in front of them that they can put their hands into um 
and yeah, I think <laughs> uh, I'll stop there. But um, I'd, I'd just like to ask you as well. Yeah, um, go ahead. What your, what your impression of motorbike racing is, um, how it's been. And also, I'd like to know how you got to know about me. Um, I didn't know the <laughs> Man, I came across your 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 profile on on Facebook, and then mm-hmm. I was like, I was just like going through your your timeline, and I was like, wow, I, you know, I've never like I was, I was so motor motor, motor 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 biking like racing on TV. I've never met anyone who's doing it, and you know, with yeah. this with this show, I'm hosting people from all walks of life, and then I was like. Man, I should have this guy on, on, on my show to come and share the story. Since like like I feel like I, I felt like your your story is so amazing because there are no I don't know a lot of people who are doing what you're doing. So that's yeah. what got me to want to know more about what you do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. that's awesome. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. So, Thank, thanks for not just scrolling past my profile. <laughs> okay, so how can people find you online? Uh yes. So on Instagram, it's yeah. at Temba underscore 18. Okay. Uh 18 is my racing number. So it's Temba T H E M B A underscore 18 at at Chief Kumalo 18 on in on Twitter. Yeah. Um, and I have my profile on Facebook, which is Temba Kumalo, but sometimes it's hard to find. But yeah. on Facebook, you can find me on my page, Temba the Chief Kumalo. Oh, okay. Okay. That's great. That's great. That's great. Thank you so much for your time, man. And I hope I would like us to do this like again soon. Nah, thank you, Freedom. Thanks for having me. And um, you should definitely come to a race sometime when you're in Joburg um come see it live because i promise you uh you've never seen anything like (laughs) (laughs) that i will definitely definitely stay in touch thank you so much man thank you take care